Sometimes you may need to only run certain steps conditionally when certain criteria are met. This is a perfect use case for using the pre-built filter action. Without code, you can set a certain condition where the workflow will stop or continue based on if the condition evaluates to true or false. Some real world examples might be only act on active users or only act on a certain segment of users in a workflow. With the filter, this is possible. Let's start with a brand new workflow. And as you can see, I've created a brand new HTTP trigger. And below you can see some sample data that I have populated the trigger with. If you ever want to quickly make one of these workflow tests, I recommend heading over to hopscotch.pipedream.com where you can input your HTTP webhook address and also the body that you'd like to test against. And here you can see my sample body is like a mock order where there's a customer and a status of the order. In this case, it's fulfilled. So in this workflow, we're just going to pretend that we would like to only act on orders that are fulfilled. So here we can see it's a brand new step and I'm going to add the filter action by searching for it in the search bar. Now we're given three main options to choose from. In our test scenario, remember that we only want to act on orders that are fulfilled. So I think the last option where, where it says continue workflow on condition makes the most sense to use. Now it's time to configure our filter. The first question to answer is what is the data type of the value that we are evaluating. So we know that the order status is a string value. It's always going to be fulfilled or open or unfulfilled, etc. So let's go ahead and pick the text value type. And the condition is the comparison operator. So here we can say matches exactly. And then the value to evaluate, that's fun to say, the value to evaluate is the status of the order, right? So I'm just going to search for status in our, in our search bar here. And we can see that it searches our data for that particular attribute. And we can select path to inject it with those special double curly brackets. And the value we want to compare against is the other side of the equation. So we're saying on the left hand side, we care about the status coming in from the webhook. We want to compare it against a string called fulfilled. So we'll just input it like this. We don't need to choose any kind of dynamic status from the webhook. We just know that the value should be fulfilled. And you can set case sensitivity below if that matters. I'll set it to false just in case I typoed. Last but not least, there is an optional field below where you can set the reason for why the data does not meet the filter criteria. Here, I'll just say something simple. I'll say this order is not yet fulfilled. And this reason will be present when we run the workflow. So I'm going ahead and test this whole flow and we should see a success on the condition because we know that the order status is fulfilled. We can see here that the condition is met for running the workflow. Now that you've seen this done with a pre-built action, I can show you how, to, how you can do it within a Node.js code step. So I'm going to add a new step and I'm going to just use the regular run node code. Now, underneath the dollar sign, you'll see different types of special built-in actions and helpers. This particular helper is called flow, which, can, which controls execution of this step. And we could say dot exit and pass it the same reason that we put above. Order is not yet fulfilled. Now, without any kind of wrapping conditional, this code as is, will cause the workflow to always exit at this step or stop running at this step. So we need to put a conditional. We'll say if steps.trigger.event.body, which is the body of the payload, and the status of the order is not equal to fulfilled, then we know that the order is not fulfilled. And we can inject this right in the center. So now we know that any steps after this particular Node.js step will exit unless the order is fulfilled. We'll test it just like the last step and we can see that the order continued. Now, just to take it a step further, I'm gonna generate another event, but instead of being a fulfilled order, let's change it to a draft order. So heading on back to Hopscotch, I'm going to change the status of this order back to draft. It's not even checked out yet, it's just a draft. 
So I'm going to send this body to our workflow and navigate to the very top again and select the new event that was just generated by me sending that webhook request. And here we could see down in the status that's a draft. And if we test the workflow, it should exit on the first step. Order is yet not, not yet fulfilled, which is the reason we set within the configuration of the step. And that covers the very basics of using filters in your workflows, using either the pre-built action or using code. You can also use filters with arrays, integers. It's really handy.